talking to you is very different from talking to a lot of people in the sense that like like you so definitively just do not want to be personal <laughs> uh, I, are you getting a real guard up uh feeling it's not guard <laughs> it doesn't no you're 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 shooting straight. You're saying exactly yeah, how right. you feel about it. So that's not guard. Yeah. Yes, true. My guard is down about the fact that my guard is down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. How do you explain your show? And I know this is an annoying question. Oh, sure. How do you explain it? Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to explain it? Um, yeah. Could you do my elevator pitch for me? Because I don't have one. Also, I'm like the marketing teams like worst nightmare because they're like we do need to explain to people what this is and i'm like oh i find it funnier if we never explain, if we don't right we never tell people right but it's I'm, theater spoof effectively is yeah do you, do you use but the I word would, spoof yeah i think spoof yeah, yeah. yeah and it's also like yeah it's like a parody of solo shows that in the process of becoming a uh, being a parody uh becomes a type of solo show with a heart yes. with a heart Oh. I hope that's not a spoiler. No, I don't think it has any heart, but I <laughs> <laughs> I like that you think it does. <laughs> I was fooled by the show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've made fools of everyone. <laughs> I don't think it has any substance or heart. I think it's very stupid and dumb. But I have found here the audience is buying into the quote unquote heart more than they do back home. I think... Um, in the UK, everyone's so cynical and like, def you know, our default communication is like bits and sarcasm. Mm -hmm. And whereas here is every people are more earnest, more, you know, people are more, <laughs> more earnest. And so when I do the earnest thing, they're like, oh, of course, no, it's the earnest bit now. And whereas in the UK, you could, the audience were like, this is a joke, right? She's not, this isn't real. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it isn't real. I got choked up during the real part. I love that. You're telling me that you don't feel you, the the part about saying that you're jealous of people who do earn a solo who, shows. Uh, it, the words are real, so <laughs> so we made sure everything I said was oh, the was, words was real. are real. Yeah, so the words are the words are <laughs> technically true, but I don't believe them with any kind of um, I don't be, like I, they're they're hollow if you know what I mean. In the sense that you don't, on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't feel jealousy towards these people. No, because you really don't. No, because it's because I I feel I felt envy that they'd made something. Yeah, that these people had gone out and they would created something, and it and it had gone well for them. And I was like, that's you know that's envy making, and you it's you like anyone completing any project is enviable. Yeah. So I was def definitely envious of that, but I wasn't envious of the idea that they could be sincere and earnest on stage because I have no desire to put myself out there like that. Oh my that. gosh, wow. Like I am just interested in stupid gags. And so, wow. Yeah. This is huge. This um, is huge breaking news. On the night you saw it, because sometimes it has- It was the opening been, night. It was opening night. So, so maybe it was an emotion the, in the, the room already. There were emotions already. there for other reasons. So I think, maybe and i can feel when they're like in the room and i'm like i'm like oh I'll, I'll try and use it but it's all cyn so cynical i'm like if i have a really tired day or like i remember one day when i did the show in australia i had a really like deep conversation with my mom and it had sort of like put me in a weird place and then that night i was just like crying on stage and yeah I was like, yes this is great this is great because it's all nonsense oh my gosh but maybe acting is just nonsense and so I'm, what i'm describing is what other actors do all the time i don't know I'm gonna unpack this more because I can't Please. get I can't get over it. I missed my therapy session this morning, so this would be really okay. great for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So you're so there's a moment in the show where you say this is the moment in the solo show where someone yeah. stops and has a, a says something that's true about them that's real. Yeah, something from the heart. <laughs> something from the heart, and you say a thing basically that you're jealous of people who do shows like this. Like for example, like. One of the shows you're parodying possibly is Phoebe Waller Bridge's Fleabag, but then I I read somewhere that you didn't think of it that way. I hadn't seen it until I'd finished the script. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was I was parodying the feeding frenzy around that show. Fascinating. But I hadn't I purposefully hadn't gone to see it. Interesting. Yeah. Have you when she saw your show, she probably saw your show. I don't think she ha I don't know. I don't think she has. I think oh. someone would have told me. But we have, you know, like, yeah. Um, 
I, I'm sorry to dwell on this, but this, <laughs> okay. I'm sh no, I'm shocked by this idea that you're not sincerely. Oh, I've really like and envied and no, because I so believed it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I'm fascinated by it. I'm like, okay, if it's not that, if you don't envy people who make auto so so autobiographical shows. Mm -hmm. I don't envy. What's I the impetus them. for doing the show? Yeah, because well, that, because that's what I came away with. Oh, that's why she made the show. Right. Well, I don't envy them. I respect them, and I like. I admire. I admire what you do. I just don't want myself on stage like that. Yeah. Like, I want. I want like as many art. You know, I want Inception. I want to be at the bottom of the Inception, mm. um, the film Inception. Yes. Um. I don't want to be myself on stage, which is why I struggle like being asked to publicize the show because I'm like, okay, but that would involve me having to talk as, as myself, yourself, yeah, um, which is a real struggle for me. So yeah, so I'm not jealous of them. I think I think two things ha happened when I came up with the show which was that uh, there were just so many one woman shows like there were so many yeah. suddenly yeah you just couldn't move for them and yeah. i spent a lot of time in festivals and fringe you know venues yeah and it felt like a lot of people were like making them and they were going really well people were really enjoying them i'd seen a bunch of them and um i didn't hugely relate to the characters in them um so that that was happening and then on the other hand it felt like there was this like kind of but i'm there was this sort of trend in comedy to be autobiographical. Yeah. And if you don't want to use your own stories as currency, then yeah. you but you want to work in comedy. Yes. Then where where were Where'd we? Go? Where were we left? Like falling over jokes or like, you know, like it felt like goofy, stupid yeah. stuff was Pratt not trendy. Pratt at the falls time. and impressions. Yeah, Pratt falls. They weren't hot back then. <laughs> and so it wasn't intentional, like, I'm going to say something about this. It was just, I guess, you know, when you make something, you're not making it in a vacuum. So in retrospect, I'm looking at that going, like, oh, that was the landscape that I made the show in. But at the time, it was like, oh, I want to make a stupid joke version of a very serious, profound theater piece. Okay. You know, it was like, it came well, from the instinct of wanting to do something really stupid. Talking to you is very different from talking to a lot of people in the sense that, like, like you so definitively just do not want to be personal. <laughs> uh, I, are you getting a real guard up uh, feeling? It's not guard. <laughs> it doesn't. No, you're 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 shooting straight. You're saying exactly yeah, how right. you feel about it. So that's not guard. Yeah. Yes. True. My guard is down about the fact that my guard is. Down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. By the way, we can talk about Adam or not talk about yeah. Adam. It's up to you. I think I'll just start crying. Yeah. Then we won't. I mean, unless you want to cry. And no, I mean, I'll probably reference. It's impossible to talk about the inception of this show without talking about him. So he'll come up. But uh, for the listeners who are confused right now, uh, Adam Brace is the director of the show, and he sadly passed. And was, uh, nothing to be said about it. I think, other than he was a wonderful person who I knew as was, well. Yeah, and uh, and I feel that he knew of me as being very private and so he would probably find it weird if i was suddenly like talking about him on a, oh, on a podcast like interesting. i'm you know i keep to myself and yeah like he 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 once said to me like you know you're doing a lot of interviews <laughs> and i sort of like watch yourself boy like oh, that's like because he kept me on the straight and narrow he 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 was my compass for like decisions generally not just about the show but oh, like fascinating is this photo right for the thing and he'd be like you look a bit egotistical i'm like okay yeah, if adam says that then that's true yeah so adam, like i have to like try and conjure the spirit of him to make decisions in my life wow. going forward yeah and adam is um to listeners of this podcast will know he was the director also of alex edelman's just for us which just debuted on broadway and um who's been on the show three times and um and I feel like Alex is much more in touch with, I, mean, I don't know him that well, but like, he, I feel like he's better at talking about it than I am. Yeah, well, I no don't know one... if you were at my <laughs> opening, I tried to talk about Adam afterwards because I, f I wanted to do a toast to him and I was just, you know, I couldn't get through it. And then I found out that Alex had done it on the stage of the Hudson right after yes. he bowed. And yes. I was like, I don't know how he did that. 
Yeah, I was very impressed by Alex, the way he dealt with it. He cried during his uh, discussion of it. But yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I had a handful of comedian friends die in my, when I was in my 30s. And I, I just don't think, I, I, I don't think I've gotten over it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's in some ways the best thing you can say about something like that is, yeah. is like, I is like, don't worry that you're feeling sad. I always say this to Alex. It's like, because we're close, but like, don't worry that you're feeling sad because like, that's what's normal and also probably won't go away. Yes. And we're like, Alex and I are bound in fire now because of this. Like, yes. This, this mirroring experience of, you know, other things like Alex was the person that told me when it happened and things like that. So like, just by circumstance and yeah so very very odd thing where we're opening our two shows i mean his is much more intense than mine his is on broadway and i when adam and i opened the show in the west end in london yeah i was n near breakdown as it was like oh, i yeah. was i'd just come off filming something i got covid i opened the show with covid we're not i was not meant to oh say gosh. that but um i did um, Britain is a very different place than here. Um, yes, that would true. never have flown here. Well, no one knew. <laughs> yeah, oh, they didn't mean. know. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I was wearing a mask and keeping my distance from everyone, but I was. It's a one, it's a one person show, right. so that's fine. Um, but ev I was telling everyone that it was because I was try trying to protect myself. So I was yeah. like, I don't want to get sick, but actually it was because I was already sick and I didn't want to make other people sick. Wow. I probably should really shouldn't have said that. But um, anyway, we were. I was doing a lot of press. I was on the brink. Everything was going wrong. So how, so I, and this is the reason I bring it up with the creatives who listen to the show is like, if that is how they feel, because I think a lot of people feel that way about like, I want to create work, but I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I don't want to have to <laughs> yeah, explain yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. I don't want to have to sell it. Yeah. Like I have to say like a lot of the bane of my existence is selling my yeah. work, like convincing people to come to the show yeah, yeah. that I've spent all these years on, which you Although, have. I, somebody said to me recently, because I was, I was doing this, um, I do this sitcom in France, weirdly. I don't know how. So I do I, I humble French. brag. I know. We, all, we all have to go off and do our sitcoms <laughs> in France sometimes. And the, it's set in the EU parliament and somebody from the parliament came to ask me if I would go and do social media f for the parliament. Like, would I go and talk about what it's like to film in the parliament? And I, my gut said, like, like you know when you just like dial your gut? your gut is just like no yeah do not do that and i was like oh i and i was like i can't i don't know anything i even though i do this job i don't know anything about the parliament yeah I, like, I knew i was gonna make a fool of myself yeah i was gonna get cancelled i was gonna do something yeah i was gonna say something really stupid and so i said no and um i think they were sad and uh i then i was explaining to someone and i was like is that okay that i said no to that and then they were like well and i was hoping that this guy would be like <laughs> um no it's totally fine that you said no and he's like well i think you know Part of being an actor is is the audience, and therefore you owe it to the audience yeah. to, to to go and give. And I was like, ah, not the answer I was looking for. That's actually, today. so funny. I was looking for you to confirm you to me owe that it I'd, to the yeah, audience. You owe it. And I and but I agree that you can't. There there doesn't exist a show or a thing or without an audience. So therefore you you know I should. I no, should. it's a real conundrum. It's a conundrum. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do uh, interviews about my shows, but I just do. But yeah, but also, like, I feel like I should be like, oh, grow up. I should not eat to you. <laughs> that wouldn't be what I said to him the first time with me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe in a couple of times later, I'd tell you to grow up. But, uh, yeah, I have to just be like, don't be so stupid. Go and do the thing. I feel like it's worth unpacking this idea of, like, of, like, dreading interviews because i think most people would listen to this and go like suck it up exactly kind of, you know what i mean like, like first world problems first, for, yeah yeah sure. high class problems but i'm actually going to push back on that and say <laughs> what a first the, world problem thing to do well the the reason why you or me or anyone uh, my wife is a poet she deals with this i have friends who are painters they do this it's like the reason you do the thing yeah is you're expressing something that you didn't want to express stress with just regular words yes yeah and then all of a sudden you get good enough at the thing where you express yourself with not the regular words yeah and they're like we need you to explain it with the regular with the, words yes that's in a, true. in a southern accent like that yeah it's always southern i i think <laughs> i yeah it's like i think i struggled with that at at first because I was like, pe people were very interested in like the feminist themes in my show and they wanted me to 
they wanted me to give them sound bites about sure. what I thought about women. And I fell for that Against trap. them, right? Yeah, yeah really, I'm really anti-women. <laughs> and I fell for that for the first like few interviews yes. I did. And then, um, and then I would see these like sound bite pull quotes from me that sounded as if I had anything worth like anything worthwhile to say on the topic, which I don't think I do. And I realized that I, the reason I was struggling with it is because I was like, but the show is the way I talk about it. Like right. the, show, the sh stupid, really stupid jokes is my way that I've decided to talk about it. Right. And I had like a real epiphany when I realized that just because they're a journalist from a newspaper doesn't mean I have to answer the question seriously. That's right. And so um, that was a fun epiphany for me because I was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to try and not answer. I'd leave an interview and I'd be like, that was very dry. And I'd be like, oh, because I answered everything very seriously. Is that what's happening right now? No. OK, good. Is it? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but at the beginning, I thought you were maybe fucking with me when you were describing that what you were saying in the sincere part of your show wasn't sincere. I was but like, it isn't. Wait, no, I get it now. <laughs> it took me 17 minutes to understand you thought I was what you meant. A bit. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were doing a bit. And uh, then I was like, oh, no, I'm I'm the other end of the bit. No, in this rare instance, I yeah. was not doing a bit. Do you ever get nervous about people, whether it's Phoebe Waller-Bridge or like, any, like Josie Long or any of these people who do solo shows, seeing your show? Would you be nervous if they came? I had a couple of the playwrights who'd written one woman shows come and see it in the early venues in london and i found that yeah quite terrifying but they all had a very nice good sense of humor yeah said fun things to me in the, oh, bar, nice. in the bar afterwards like um one of them said that she felt very triggered by it and she said i've really lived it and i was like i know i know you have and i, I was like i'm sorry but they 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 were very they were at least to my face they were very good humored yeah um because you definitely nail a lot of things about it like i do autobiographical solo shows and like i was able to like fully enjoy that it was being parodied the only thing that crossed my mind is it was like are there enough people who've yeah. seen solo shows yeah to enjoy a parody of solo shows well this is a question that commercial producers <laughs> <laughs> had to ask before we, uh, <laughs> before we went into the west end like, yeah yeah like, and clearly they did yeah but it, I was, mean, a it was a punt. huge hit it was a risk like we were like we'd played at soho theater and sold well and then but like that's Soho Theatre. I don't like it's. I so, love it. Like, I did my girlfriend's boyfriend there like ten years the ago. It's the best. Like it's oh, the it's best the theatre, and um, it, that's the audience. And we were just very concerned that it wasn't gonna. Re we know that we were just playing to the sort of echo chamber, but um, and yeah, that's and that's where it, you, I, I want to say that's where you met your director Adam, right? Because he worked at Soho Theatre for no, years. Yeah, no, I met. He directed um, my sketch show like back in twenty fifteen. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Um, called Massive Dad. People always, so so the, one of the biggest questions I get as a solo performer in relation to my director is like, what do they do? What do they do? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, the truth is a ton. Oh yeah. And, and it, but dr more dramaturgy, directage as Adam yes. called it. Um, a lot of script stuff. Yeah, a lot, lot of script stuff. Yeah. Like my, my, my soundboard for every inane thought I've ever had effectively. Right. You know, yeah, which has been challenging here. Like we, luckily, um, Adam was able to come to Sydney with me in February. So uh, that was the first time we'd performed the show outside of the UK. So we did our reference comb, is what he called it. Yeah. Going through the show and finding every single reference, like you were saying, leisure, leisure center. Right. Um, you know, we went through the whole script in Sydney and changed it. And we market surveyed people around the opera house being like, what would you, where would you buy this from? And where would you get this from? And uh, changed all the references. So I had like a base. I knew where the problems were, but I didn't know what my new New York version was going to be. Yeah. And so I've been trying to figure that out. When I was in Australia, I, in my show, My Girlfriend's Boyfriend, I, I talk about going to the carnival when I was a kid and going and eating cotton candy. They're like, what's cotton candy? And I was like, uh, it's like this sugar and it's like, you, it's like a, candy like, floss. Yeah, you know what they said? <laughs> fairy floss. Oh, fairy floss. Fairy floss. Candy floss is the UK, fairy floss. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. So candy, 
Candy Floss is how I did it in UK, and then Fairy Floss fairy I did floss. it. What was amazing, Isn't I that found. Sweet. Fairy Floss is hilarious because we were Fairy Floss. We were laughing exactly. We were <laughs> laughing about how like floss is oh, yeah. talk about reverse psychology. Yeah, that's on, like yeah, it's like that's the opposite of floss. Yeah, so using sugar to <laughs> floss the teeth of a fairy. Yeah. Fairy floss. Yeah. It's floss for fairies. This is what we do on the show. It's called The Slow Round. And it's just like sort of memory-based questions. But it's like, what are... Um, do you have a nickname growing up? No. Bad nickname? Good nickname? Bullies? Bullies? Did I... It was my nickname. Did you have bullies? bullies? My nickname yeah, was, was bullies. was your nickname Liz <laughs> Bullies? <laughs> Liz <laughs> Bullies Kingsman? Um, did I have bullies? No. I went to school in Australia in a... In, in, I look back on like incredibly idyllic like just sort of nice very nice school where everyone was quite nice to each other but i feel mm. like that's the sort of thing that you say if you were one of the people that didn't have bullies and it was all very like i don't know i just look back on it when i'm like why did i ever leave <laughs> or, oh wow why did i ever leave or it. grow up or leave school or have to be an adult in any way i'm like that was really good actually oh you definitely missed your therapy session today yeah yeah I certainly <laughs> these are, did these are key questions key for the questions. doctor <laughs> but um, like most people look back and they're like i can't but i they couldn't wait to get out of it yeah that's how it and was. i was like i didn't want it to end yeah i had such a nice time at school wow yeah huh weird right it's a little weird for me, but I but I get what you're saying. You buy it? <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is funny, like in some ways, when you go like, like some people like really lock into school, some people don't. But yeah. I feel like a lot of times artists or people actually don't lock into school. Yeah, it's uh, it's true. So I was trying to listen to your the Judd Apatow episode, oh, yeah. where you said like, what trauma from your life brought yeah. you to comedy? And I was thinking about that in my own life. I was like, no. I don't you don't know. have that. No. But that, that's, kind that's, of, what, that's kind of what my show is about as well. Like the yeah. show is about this desperate need to have trauma to talk about right. on stage. And I don't feel like I do. I mean, currently I am grieving. So that's happening. But uh, other than that, you know, I don't think I have, I don't feel traumatized. And that made us for a certain point in time kind of like not really valuable in comedy. Yeah. You know? Well, it's funny, like when I, when it was awful and sad when Adam died. And one of the first things I thought, and I said to Alex, I go, who's, he, he's gonna have a lot of solo shows written about him. I and know. that's what that's what he would have wanted. I know, it's so funny. <laughs> Everyone he would said have, the same thing. He'd funeral, enjoy like, that. Everyone's gonna write about this. Yeah, 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 of course. There's like 10 Edinburgh shows being created right now yeah, like, by a, very, a, very a, sad Immediately comedians. being like, yeah. and, then and then he gave me a note that I couldn't quite handle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Did yeah. you, do you have a smell you remember growing up? Hmm. Uh, no, but when you said that, I imagined those flowers that are like those white flowers that have like yellow frangipanis, maybe. Is that what they're called? I don't, I don't know. know. Daisies? Not daisies, but some sort, of, some sort of flowery scent. Okay. It's just very like colorful and blue and green. That's what I think of. How the hell did it's you like end up beach. in comedy? It's I like, don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> You're like, I had no drama. No, I had no drama. I, my memory also, of, like, of smells are, are like? flowers. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, what the I'm fuck is going so, on here? I have such a, like, dead, cold heart. So what's happening there? It's not Maybe dead, it's cold heart, though. Maybe my that... dead, cold heart was growing up <sighs> in a place full of daisies and frangipanis being like, something's at odds here. And so maybe that's what it was. I respect that. Yeah. Can, we, can we build something from that? <laughs> like, I don't know. I do. I definitely remember feeling like at odds with it, but I enjoyed it. Did you, were you ever left out of a group growing up? No, I had great friends. Killing me. We, we would honestly, honestly spend our weekends getting the bus to the beach, <laughs> the reading novels on the beach going back to someone's house, oh making God. lunch together, like avocado and, and oh bread, a mango, oh, avocado, a mango that's, that's cut hard, into that's slices. That's hard, that's hard, yeah, yeah. And then we'd hang out for the afternoon and then we'd like go home to our houses with our pets and our gardens. It was so wholesome and I realized I sound, 
Yeah, I know what I sound like. You should write a solo show called Utopia. (laughs) (laughs) But I, yeah. Anyway, that's truly what my childhood was like. Fascinating. It was lovely. But honestly, like, this is why, and, and look, I... I, I I don't mean to be the person who's like m- like mining for like oh of course you're broken in some way. Oh, Although I when Jimmy Carr was on, he said, you know, show me a comedian and I'll and I'll ask you like, what was their relationship with their dad or something like that. Like it was something yeah, to the effect yeah. of like or their mom, or like was your mom? Yeah. S- he, he'll, he I think he goes like, was your mom sick? <laughs> okay. You know, and it's like. It's like it's th- of three options. Yeah. yeah, they have a. There's a lot of dead dad shows in Edinburgh. That's a. That's like a joke about Edinburgh. Yeah, but like, I think he's not entirely wrong. So like with you, you didn't have that. You didn't have the trauma you're describing. No. Just like, how do you? I think here's the reason Let why. Square it away. <laughs> well, here's here's the reason why, I think often there's a correlation. Because, there's a void. And you're trying to kind of fill the void, and because mm. and 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 because you have uh, it's so insatiable, you end up being able to work so hard because fundamentally show business is so goddamn hard. So like, do you mean like the void? Something's broken, so you like want to fill it with yes, laughter. But yes. I, <laughs> but t- comedians don't laugh like they hang out with funny people. Yeah, they don't like they're not like walking down the street like Care Bears, you know, like no, like no, no. So I don't think they're filling a void in that. They're not doing stuff to make themselves laugh. And I think part of that is honestly like because I have the same thing. Like I spend a majority of my social life with comedians, and part yeah. of it is I have so much social anxiety in life outside of. <laughs> comedy yeah right saying like the wrong thing putting my foot in my mouth in some weird way yeah and that weirdly like with comedians there's no such thing as putting your foot in your mouth really because there's like an immediate like joke punishment yeah like the moment you put your foot in your mouth someone just like goes at you (laughs) yeah yeah and like calls you on it in a way that isn't mean-spirited per se or it's mean-spirited but like in kind of their hugging you kind of way. Yeah. Although weirdly, like, I never, ever describe myself as a comedian. I don't ever think of myself really? like that. Yeah. I've made, like, a really bizarre point of it in all the press stuff that to be called an actor or a writer because I don't think... Because I don't ever want to be myself on stage, I never write stand-up. I'm never going to go on panel shows. And you know, they have, you know, big panel shows in the UK where yeah. comedians go and be oh, themselves. Oh, I know all about funny. them. Eight you out of probably, ten cats. You probably do them. You can do never any? done one. Do you want? I'd be, as I'd, be ple- I'd be pleased to uh, be invited on one. I've never been invited. I'm sure you'll get the calling invite. all cars, calling yeah. all cars. This is this is the point of this one was to get you on. <laughs> yes. QI. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, but I would never go on any of those. Like I would. You don't go on those. I well, I haven't been asked, but if I was asked, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Like Nish Kumar goes on those. Exactly. Who Nish I is, love. Nish and is a, and wakes Sarah up straight Milliken. on a panel show. For Nish. <laughs> 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 he's on three he's or so four good on lunch. those yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um yeah so that's why he's got I, a real knack i feel this. like it would be insulting to comedians if i called myself a comedian because i'm not actually a comedian that's what joe my brother joe was asking well, his question was where do you workshop the show because like where do you i guess as the full thing as opposed to like because i workshop the show in my shows in 10 15 minute mm. chunks then I go out to clubs yeah. and I workshop an hour. But like the 10 minutes like at the Comedy Cellar here and stuff like that, yeah. it's really significant for process. But it sounds like you don't do that. Well, I this is the own, first, only, and last show I'll make. So it's... It, f- You're not going to make a show again? <laughs> Never. No. Wow. Um, I was in, I'm interested in films and I yeah. want you know, to make films. Do you think you're going to so, direct films? Uh, ideally, yeah. Oh, that's great. If I can just that's a fun aspiration. get a good night's sleep, I should be able to, yeah. Have you directed um, any films? No, only short films. Wow. Yeah. I'm excited so, for that. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was, yeah, so I was like, right, put that down, go and go off and like I was doing more acting and sitcoms and I was like, the aim was right, make films. Yeah. And then this idea was like, eating away at me and so i was like i'll just very quickly <laughs> very quickly just get this out of my system and then the and, show just like and then the show it, was it just became like an, an re- animate object and it had its own life and pulse and i was like oh okay fine one, so one might say that the reaction to the show was flowers <laughs> 
it just smelt of beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful summer's day. Um, <laughs> and uh, so yeah. no, so it's yeah, so no, it. so no bullies. No, bullies. I remember the smell of flowers, and then and I the thing and, I made went well. Then I made <laughs> won all these awards. And it went Honestly, great if by you accident. Write a script of how to like hate someone. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. Be what I've said today. This is the part of the show where I work out material okay. that I'm working on because basically I spent three, four years on a show. Yeah. So this is like the beginning. This is your new show. Yeah. yeah. So Old Man in the Pool is what I'm doing in London. Yeah. And then that's going to come out on a thing eventually. And then and, and then right now I'm just like work from scratch. This is just like no cards and right. here's some jokes. So. This is a joke I'm working on about how American Southern accent, like sometimes I do not understand it. Like I was in a parking lot after one of my shows and this woman just goes, she goes, she's like 30 feet away. He goes, dip, 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 a hat. And I was just like, what? And then she goes, dip, 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 a hat. And I thought, oh no, uh, I, I don't, all I understood was the word hat and you yeah. can't ask what twice, right? Yeah. So then I just go, I, I'm wearing a hat. So I just go like, thanks. Yeah. This is some kind of hat. And yeah. she goes, no. <laughs> dip, 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 a hat. And I just waved and I like walked away slowly and I thought, I guess we'll never know each other. It's nice. I'm trying to find something in it. It's like just an anecdote that I, happened. She... Do you, I like that in the no, when she said no to you, <laughs> she understood that you didn't understand. She, like, good point. There was she understood in me, that moment. but I didn't understand her. Yeah. You're right. She understood that you were struggling to understand her, but she didn't make it, <sighs> That's a she good didn't point. Um, make it make more sense to you. She just starts to tell it again. Right. This is, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Or the alternative is, she, she hated your hat. And so when you went, thanks, she's like, no, I'm saying I don't like that hat. Right, right, right. So I could do an extrapolation out on like what she thought I was saying and that she was judging me. Yeah. Like in some ways, this, the bit could hinge on itself because like I'm judging her for having yeah. this wild accent. But meanwhile, yeah. like she's judging me. She understands me and her. Yeah, she's bilingual in this. She's instance. bilingual in this instance. <laughs> yeah. I like that. And you're not. So you're the, Yeah. The, the, oh, this is something I'm really trying to understand for myself. I was working on this this weekend. And I was trying to understand how people could find the humor. <laughs> I mean, I think it's funny, but like how the like where the humor is in this, which is basically like when you fall in love. Like I fell in love with my wife 20 years ago, like instantly, like mm -hmm. fell in love with the right way, and it's out of your control. Yeah, falling in love is out of your control. It's like being hit by a bat. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't get to choose when you get hit by a bat. Yeah. Right? And so, like, I fell in love with Jenny, and, like, I was in a relationship with someone else who I had insisted I would never fall in love with anyone or be in a relationship. Insisted is a, yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I had felt confidently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt yeah. very confident. Insisted, this. yes. And then, um, so I fell in love with Jenny, then I had to go back to this first person. And is say, this, it's true. It's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had to say, um, remember how I was saying that I'd never <laughs> fall in love? Good news and bad news on that one. Uh, good news is I did. So if you're rooting for my journey, uh, then uh, it's a good week. The bad news is it's this other lady, and I don't even think you're going to meet her. Uh, so, uh, anyway, it's not you, it's me, or it's sort of you. It's not, it's you in the sense of it's, I needed to meet you to know I was in love with her. Um, it's not you, it's me and her. I'm going to go now. And then that's the end. And it, and what's funny is, is it's one of these bits where I'm sure you've had some of these things like this before. If you're the biggest laugh is if you're rooting for my journey, yeah, yeah. right? Like it's, but it's right in the middle. Yeah. And then at the end it gets kind of sad. Like, it's yeah. not you, it's me and her is kind of like, blah. So then... You need to be heading towards something. Well, yeah, and I think what it is, is I, and, and, the, and I haven't put this on this part of it on stage yet, I think it's heading towards, like, I'm comfortable saying this because I have been the other person, like, 14 times. Oh, yeah, Like, okay. previous to that, I, like, literally, I remember 
being 19 and just being like with someone and being yeah, like, right. I found you. You understand me more than, you know, and the person being like, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right, it's, thanks. It's like <laughs> from like a, stat, like a stats point of view, it's needed to happen. Like, like statistically. Statistically. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually what I was pointing out the other night because the, the audience kind of gasps a little bit at the end part. At the... It's not you, it's me and her. I mean, because yeah. it's like, because it sounds mean spirited, and of course, I don't mean it to be mean spirited. It would just but be I, a mean thing to it, say to someone in a, in a breakup. You yeah, never yeah. say it. You've <laughs> yeah. it's, it's an outrageous thing to say. And, um, and so I was trying to talk through it. Sometimes I do that with audiences. I'll be like, well, the reason, the logic behind that is. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was, and I think that it, and it's basically that. It's, it's that like, it's funny because like I've been that person so many yeah. times and it's like that's the way of life like it's, all, like if you fall in love chances are you're sort of seeing someone else right or you're sort of interrelated to someone else or were six yeah. months ago or whatever Not like yeah no one's at this point in a vacuumless vacuumless you know yeah, I mean? vacuumless. vacuumless I think that's the word no one's that's the American version like yeah 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 yeah. well i've only been here for a few weeks so yeah just sort of getting, to, getting used to it but uh yeah that and also like the audience don't want you the they it's that classic thing of like the you you they don't want to root for someone who's got too much going on for themselves so they don't 100%. want you to be i.e i had a nice childhood no way <laughs> everything's like <laughs> <spelling of flowers. laughs> and i really like uh, enjoying, enjoying doing the show that i'm having uh, with. <laughs> i.e for example but yeah so they what they you can't if they if they're gasping at you saying it's not you it's me and her it's like that means for a split second like you were really like a cool guy for that. No, I know. I and become so, cool so, guy. Yeah, and so nothing you, worse so, than cool guy yeah, in comedy. Cool guy comedy. And yeah, so yeah. then your your instinct is to immediately be like, no, 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 let me tell you all the reasons I'm not a cool right, guy. Right, right. And then you're going to tell them about all the 14 times that you got rejected. Right. But it's just like, isn't that telling them is purely so that you can have the lower status again, and they can think you're an you're. A it's big not purely big. for that. Well, no, but on a sort of holistic. Um, they don't want you. Cool guy comedy is. Uh, it's just not funny. Not funny, and it's not um, sustainable. <laughs> it's a not sustainable. Although arguably, it is sustainable in the sense that there are some cool guy comics who oh. are very popular. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's the thing I'm toying with right now. It's not you. It's me and her. Okay. And the, but they're gasping. <laughs> yeah, but they're it's gasping. but overall it's sort of fun because it's like that's funny because it's. I don't know, like, because immediately I start talking also about, like, about, like, late, like, I'm married and, like, lately I've had, like, people, <laughs> to, like, a lot of friends get divorced. Mm -hmm. And I I want to say to my friends who are getting divorced, like, you don't know who this hurts most. It's me. <laughs> it's your married friends. You have to go back to our husbands and wives and just be like, so that's not us, right? Like, it's we're you're causing too many uncomfortable conversations in our house yeah 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 well we do like a, a divorce autopsy we're like well oh. they're and they didn't communicate but we are <laughs> i mean we're having a conversation we're doing it right, right now, now. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the last thing we do is working out for a cause and it's like basically we contribute to whatever organization you think is doing a good job and then and then uh, we link to them in the show notes we can encourage other people to. oh my gosh to i have the perfect contribute. one um from my show, the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust. Oh my gosh, it's is that real? It's a real charity that protects the wetlands That's habitats for birds and wildlife. One of my favorite things about your show is that you, your program, you, there's a fake show within the show, and you, your program, the front is the program for your show, and the, the reverse, if you flip the book over, is the fake show, and it's lovely. You really did the work on it. Like, did some work, You yeah. did the full fake one. Okay, did I do the work or did I procrastinate writing something else? For, right. you know, Precisely. Was it like, you could write this script that you're overdue on, or you could write fake content yes. for the program. <laughs> fake content. Um, so yeah, I wrote some fake content for the program, which is quite fun. Well, congratulations on the show. And I'll see you in London, I think, in the fall Thank if you're you around. So much. And I love your show. Thank you.